So much opening night buildup and then just an on ice letdown in the first four minutes. Hi, everyone. From our Delta MSG studios, John Giannone, Steve Valiquette. After a 4-0 Islanders win over the Rangers on opening night inside the Garden. Steve, you know, you get the feeling knowing the Islanders as we do, having watched them go to the Final Four last summer, that when a 2-0 deficit hits that early, it's not game over, but it's game really difficult. Yeah, look, there were two wins away from getting to the cup final, right? And uh, losing to Tampa. But here's the thing. Any coach, any coach evaluating this game will say you have no business being in the hockey game if you take seven or more penalties. The Rangers took eight, right? It overtaxes some of your players, and it doesn't get enough of your players into the game. Heedle, 12 minutes. Kako, 11 minutes. Lemieux five minutes, Lemieux five minutes in a game that you want to have the Lemieux that he can be, be in there and playing that physical game against the Islanders, not playing. Miller, 14 minutes. Enough players didn't get on the ice, and uh, it really hurt this team. I, hurt the flow of the game, and um, David Quinn's going to be rattled for sure because he's going to say we shot ourselves in the foot. I mean, right off the bat, Jack Johnson takes a holding penalty in mm -hmm. front. Uh, too many men penalties. Advantage ad takes a hooking penalty. These weren't great penalties. These were not penalties that stopped goals from being scored. I had a coach, uh, Steve Sterling, if you remember Steve, yeah, he coached the Islanders. Coach, yeah. He used to come in the locker room and he would say, lazy, stupid, selfish penalties. It got to a point where we were having a bad stretch and yeah. in unison the players would be saying it at the same Just time. Chanting, yeah. It's a lighthearted way, light way of saying, just not good enough, but, I mean, the Rangers had no opportunity to be in this game because of the penalties. Yeah, so it was it was 2 nothing Islanders within the first four minutes, goals by Nelson and Lee, and about 13 and a half minutes in, Barzell scores, make it 3 nothing against Igor Shesterkin in the first period. Mm -hmm. Of the three goals that were scored, which one was maybe most indicative of the way that first period went, not only for the Rangers, but for their goaltender? Well, um, starting with the first one, which was uh, off of Fox, right, and it was on the PK, mm -hmm. um, I really don't like the one knee down thing because as a defender, you leave your stick vulnerable to not really helping your goalie with the pass. You don't give them a clear read. And then you indirectly, too often the times, the puck breaks off of you and then you can't get back into the play and defend. So that one's really on like a team concept. And I would really have the talk with my defenseman and say, guys, let's just stay on our feet. If, if we're going to go down, we're going to lay out, but we're not going down on one knee. It makes my job so much harder as a goalie. Um, now, when you talk about the second goal, because it's a two-on-one and Anders Lee takes the puck himself and he's hanging back in the play, so it just breaks down. But the thing about it is it's not that it's a bad goal and it's on Shesterkin, and he only gave up one of those on 10 last year. It's just a team culture and trust. Uh, you really want to have the feeling early in the season when you build the building blocks of your season that your goalie's going to have that save for you right. so the next time you can defend it the same way. The worst thing that can happen is if your goalie gives up one and then everybody says, oh, well, we can't trust him on the shot, and then they double out of position and give up the bigger play, which is the pass. So team, team culture has to be reinforced. The coaching staff would have to say tomorrow in video, hey, boys, Shesty's got this one for us. He gave up one. Let's give him a break. He'll get it the next time, okay. right? And uh, the third one is the Barzal goal. And the reason why that's a bad goal, and it's not a bad goal just because I woke up in the morning and I call it a bad goal. It's a bad goal because everybody else in the league stops it, okay? And now, there's 100 shots in a season. Seven times this goal will be scored. Seven times. Player walks into that spot and shoots where the goalie's got a clear view of it. So, again, in 2021, that doesn't look like a bad goal because... Hockey's played at such a, a, a fast pace, and the shot is such a nice shot. And yes, you can say all of those things. But I'm just telling you that this is what I do for a living away from here. Seven out of 100 will go in from there. So that would qualify as a bad goal in my books, uh, again, because everybody in the league is stopping it. Yeah. And so did he last year. Mm -hmm. I said it uh, in the first intermission. He had that shot 28 times last season, one goal. So again, more of an anomaly than what is Shesterkin 
You know, mm -hmm. so that's just the thing. I think that's right. the message. And the, the the shoulders down, eyes up to the ceiling, body language would tell you he probably knew he. Should oh, he knows it. Well. Every yeah. goalie knows it. Trust mm -hmm. me. Hey, yeah. look. As much as the critics will be out there chirping, we're harder on ourselves. Every goalie is. And and by the way, he had an outstanding third period yeah. too. Yeah. He came back strong. There was a lot of storylines leading into tonight's game. We talked about a lot of them on the pregame shows. Sam and Joe talked about them during the game. One of them, lineup-wise, was Chris Kreider as a penalty killer. Here yep. he is. He debuted in the league in the playoffs in 2012, had never been a penalty killer. In fact, when the Rangers would take a too-many-men penalty, he would go in the box because yeah. he was that much <laughs> not a penalty killer. Yeah. Now he is. What did you see from night one? Um, so how can Chris Kreider use his assets and get himself more ice time, which is great for him? Uh, just use your speed and attack, and this would be one of those parts of the game where you could say that Chris Carter can be valuable because the coaching staff would say, Chris, be aggressive. We want to kill this penalty away from our net, so let's do it inside their blue line. Don't let them come out of the zone. Be up them, and, and he can because when he reroutes himself, he can always put pressure to make them make a quick play, make a mistake like the Islanders did here, and he will jump on you when you're sleeping. So, yes, for Chris Kreider, this is a good spot to be in because you're going to get more ice time, especially in a game where you take eight penalties, and now you're going to be out there getting your legs going. But it's good for the team. He kills almost 30 seconds inside the other team's blue line. That's an outstanding job. You just earned yourself more of an opportunity to be on the PK in the next game.